You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. All right. Broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's now, brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a seed. Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Father who Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. Amen. This is when Christians speak, talk radio. Amen. Um, today's broadcast is just about in grace. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm excited about the message that Mr. Band have today. Amen. This is uh, um, part two. Amen. In this series. So, uh, it messages resting during turbulent times, amen. So we're excited about what God is going to do, amen. And uh, and um, so we're looking forward to um, a great word from here, from her, amen. Uh, amen. I just want to remind you, Minister Vanessa is on every Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. This is at 7 p.m. every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring if it's Rick Reverend Randall is on Thursday at 12 noon and uh, Friday night joy. Amen. It's at 7 p.m. on Fridays. The boat, the bread of life uh, with Reverend Ray is every first and fourth Sunday at 7 p.m. Challenge to change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The monthly broadcast are as follows. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, uh, uh, Minister Jordana Cunningham. Uh, and, yeah, that's it. Every <laughs> second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m., marriage takeover, the body of one, Reverend Eric and Reverend Jamaica Thompson, amen, is every third Sunday at 7 p.m., hour three, real life, real men, real talk, amen, with uh, Ray Rose, Austin Green, Cleophis Malone, Tyrone Rose, and Antonio Mitchell is every second Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, our weekly prayer is called Midday Glory Prayer, Reverend Gwen Dixon. Amen. It's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. This is a free compass code number uh, 712-770-5506. The access code is 732-499. You can always go back and listen to any of the broadcasts on our website. Also, uh, on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio.com, just the name of it. I do want to let you know in advance, we do have an updated website going on. It's still in the process, but it looks better than what it did. Please go by all means, check it, check it out. Check out what we're doing. We uh, have partnered with Amazon.com as a way to raise funds um, for the broadcast. So go check out and see what we got going on on the website, whenchristianspeed.com. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started with Turbulence 2. Amen. Um, uh, uh, do, resting during Turbulence Times. Uh, this is part two by Minister Vanessa Williams. God bless. Well, praise the Lord. Again, this is Minister Van with When Christians Speak Talk Radio. This segment is called his abounding grace and i just want to welcome you again to our program i consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to share god's word with you um just to encourage you that you can make it through these turbulent times i will be continuing the series that i started about two weeks ago called resting during Tur- turbulent times resting during turbulent times At this time, we're going to go to God in prayer, and then we'll get right into the word. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, Lord God, thanking you, Father, for your grace and for your mercy. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for giving us another opportunity to serve, another opportunity to share your goodness with others, Lord God. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, as you said in your word, when it goes forth, it will not return unto you empty-handed, but it will go out and accomplish that which you would have it 
to accomplish. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that ears would be tempted, Father, to hear what you would have them to hear, and so that they can go forth and share this good news with someone else. Thank you. Give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, once again, we are starting, um, we are continuing, rather, uh, um, this series on resting during turbulent times, and this is part two. Now, in part one, which we started about two weeks ago, the title was called Be Still. Be Still, and it was taken from the theme Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, will be exalted in the earth. Be still. In part one, we shared why it's important to rest in his word. Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. In part one, we um, shared that weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And that should give you some hope and expectation. So we're talking about resting during turbulent times, times of conflict, times of disorder, times of confusion, times of pain, disappointment, distress, times of being physically or emotionally ill, hard times. Not knowing your left from your right times. Be still. That was part one. Part one, we also shared that your greatest weapon during turbulent times was praising God. Praising God. And we also shared in part one the different names of God. Because it's important when God says, be still and know that I am God. You got to know what you know. So in part one, we shared the many names that God has. We won't get into all those in part two you can go back and listen to that segment at any time um but because he's all powerful he's all knowing he's omnipotent he has so many names uh, we talked about how the name Elohim means the strong creator god jehovah god lord master and he's a relational god we talked about the god of my mercy we talked about el shaddai we talked about so many things we talked about god um shalom the prince of peace jehovah jireh the lord will provide and we also talked about in the name of god jehovah rapha the lord that heals we're talking about god our healer so here tonight we will continue this series with part two called resting and trusting god during turbulent times trusting god during turbulent times proverbs 3 and 5 says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path this is going to be our theme scripture for part two of trusting god during turbulent times so i want to just spend a few minutes to encourage you to trust god Trust him, especially when it doesn't make sense to do so. All your senses tell you to take matters into your own hands, that God doesn't hear your prayers, that he's too busy to care, but that this is something way bigger than anything else and you just want to run. You want to escape, knowing that there's really nowhere to run, nowhere to escape. Perhaps you feel like the pain is just too unbearable. The mountain is just too high. Perhaps you feel like nobody really cares. And I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar, that God does hear your prayer, that he is always with you, and that there is nothing too hard for God. I'm here to tell you that the only escape route you need to take is the one that takes you straight to the throne room of God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding. You see... When you trust someone, you can depend on that person to always be there for you. And when we're talking about God himself, our Father, that makes all the difference in the world. Here's something that I shared with some friends earlier this week, and I believe it's worth repeating. For I believe it's a wonderful analogy of God's faithfulness, even when we don't see clearly. Now, each morning when my husband drops me off at this train station, 
on my way to work. He patiently waits in the car until the train pulls off. You see, we have this thing where as the train is leaving the station, I wave at him. And usually he responds by blinking the car lights. It's around 5 a.m., so it's dark outside. This morning, I mentioned that I don't always see the lights blinking, and he responded, Well, I always wave back. You don't see me? He says he always sees me waving because the lights are on inside the train. That reminds me that God always sees me, even when I don't feel it. That reminds me that even when I don't see a response from God, He sees me. You see, God shines His light upon me. I just keep talking to Him, even during the dark, silent moments, for He's always there, waving back at me. He's always there, waving back at me. I thank God for that, and I hope this encourages someone somewhere, some way. For you see, God's always there. He's always watching. He's always caring. He's always loving. God's always thinking about us, even during, and especially during turbulent times. We just got to rest and trust Him. You see, especially in the midst of turbulent times, it may somehow be difficult to focus. It may be difficult to remember just who you are. It may be difficult to rest. It may be difficult to trust. That's your own senses talking. Sometimes life comes at you unexpectedly. I get that. It happens to me as well. Sometimes and oftentimes trials and tribulations will meet you around the corner. Circumstances may seem to overtake you. And you may wonder when you will ever see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm here to encourage somebody somewhere today. Don't trust your senses. Trust God. Don't give up. Because we're talking about a trusting God while you are resting during turbulent times. You see, the storms might look dark and dreary right now. It may appear that there is no light nowhere in sight. But the sun's right behind the clouds, just bursting to get out. Yes, the sun will come out soon. When I look outside right now and I see it's been raining all day. This is a Sunday and it's been raining all day. It's cloudy outside, but guess what? The rain is not going to last always. The clouds will roll away eventually, and the sun will come out. So trust God in spite of your senses. Don't give up. Makes no difference what it appears. Makes no difference what you feel. Makes no difference what others say. Just trust the awesome, mighty, powerful hand of God to move on your behalf. You see, Satan is a liar. God is a promise keeper. Don't trust your senses. Trust God. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of God. Second Corinthians first chapter, the 20th verse says, For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So, my sister, Whatever you might be going through at this very moment, whatever it is, just know that God has not left you. For Jesus said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even until the very end. So I'm here to tell someone today that your faith is just being tested. I recall someone saying a long, long time ago, faith that hasn't been tested cannot be trusted. Hmm. Faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. At that time, I didn't really focus on what that meant. But let's think about this. Faith that has not been tested can't be trusted. When you wake up in the morning, how do you know that you'll be able to walk unless you put your feet on the floor and take a step? Without thinking about it, because you've been able to walk for so many times before this day, you tested your feet without really thinking about it. When you get into a car to drive, how do you know the car will start unless you turn the ignition? Without thinking about it, because you started for, because the car started for you so many times before, without thinking about it, you tested your ignition. Well, faith is action, and it's a spirit. For the Word of God tells us in James 2.20 that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You see, because we fa we use our faith every day for all kinds of actions, we really don't think about it. 
Faith. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, while at the same time it's not evidently seen. We need to get to the point that just like we trust our feet to carry us each step, we trust our faith in God to sustain us. Trust in God in spite of your senses. We need to get to the point that just like we trusted that car to start when we got in it, we trust our faith in God to sustain us. Trust God in spite of your senses. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You see, he didn't tell us we were going to understand these things, but what he did tell us was to trust him. He didn't tell us that we were going to understand everything that we're going through, but what he did tell us is that when we're going through, to just trust him. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He didn't tell us to look to man to direct our path. He said, acknowledge him first. Like seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, Matthew 6.33. And then all these other things will be added. You see, we need to get to the point that even though I can't see God, I can still trust him. We need to get to the point that even though I can't feel God, I can still trust him through experience. Trust in God in spite of your senses, for God is a promise keeper. Regardless of how you might feel about a situation, trust God. Regardless of how the situation might seem, trust him, because God is a promise keeper. Even while you're resting during turbulent times, trust God. I come here to encourage you tonight that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is still very much alive. He wants us to trust him with all of our hearts. He wants us to trust him with all of our hearts. You see, you got to go through something for faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. You got that? You got that? How do you know that you can really trust your faith in God if you don't go through something? And know that it was God that brought you through that ordeal. Sure, it's easy to say when everything's going fine. Oh, yeah, I got faith. And I know with confidence that my faith would get me through anything. It's easy to say I would trust in the Lord. I would not trust my senses. I would trust in the Lord until I die. Oh, that sounds, sounds good. But wham, when something happens. For example, when illness comes knocking at your door, or perhaps your body may be racked with pain, a staggering medical report shows up, and your mind might begin to wander all in, over into the unknown, and then you allow fear to slip in. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Who am I going to call? What do I lean on? Do you start mumbling, grumbling, and complaining about the situation? Do you forget about the same God that brought you through that last situation and the one before that? It's the same God that would sustain you through any situation? Will you stand up in your God-given image and declare with conviction that regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it sounds like, regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what it smells like, I'm going to trust God. Even though it may look bleak, Will you still say with confidence from the depth of your soul that your hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness? Will you rely on your faith or will you find yourself questioning God? Why, God? Why is this happening to me? Will you find yourself conflicted with emotions or will you stand still on the promises of God? Will you trust him during turbulent times? Will you trust God in spite of what you are going through? I'm just here to encourage someone that if you don't go through anything, your faith is not being tested. And if your faith is not being tested, how do you how do you know that you know that you know that you can trust your faith? Faith versus fear. Fear. What is fear? Basically, it's false evidence appearing real. Yes, your situation is real. Yes, your pain is real. But I want to ask you something. Is your faith walk real? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So even during hard times, even during painful times, even during trials and tribulations, there is hope. And that's what faith is for. And you need to cling to that. Cling to the word of God. Romans 8.24 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees why does he hope for? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So basically, 
You don't need to hope for something that's already there. You don't need to hope for something that's apparently already there. The 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews is basically a continuation of the 11th chapter, which is oftentimes referred to as the faith chapter. You see, in the 11th chapter, there is mention of numerous, numerous Old Testament men and women who, through their faith in God, with, withstood much, much persecution. These Old Testament brothers and sisters endured tremendous shame and suffering. But through it all, the Word of God lets us know they did not give up. One would say they went the distance. Sure, they had obstacles. Sure, they had setbacks. Sure, there were some who decided to take matters into their own hands at one point or another. But they never gave up. They learned from their mistakes. They got up and they went the distance. What about you? Our old brothers, Old Testament brothers and sisters were not as privileged as we are. Their time period was before Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection. Yet they persevered for the hope that they had. The 11th chapter challenges us to go the distance by reminding us of what our Old Testament brothers and sisters went through by faith. We can read more about them in the Old Testament, but this chapter in Hebrews summarizes their trials and triumphs. And so, here we are in the 12th chapter, being reminded of these saints of old who were referred to as this great cloud of witnesses. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first and second verse says, Wherefore we seeing are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The second verse says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus looked beyond that cross and saw me. He looked beyond that cross and saw you. And he endured that cross because of you and because of me. He despised the shame, but thank God now he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, sometimes, just sometimes in the midst of life, in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of our trials, yes, in the midst of our storms, life does happen. We get weary. We get tired, and so you need a refuel. You need a refreshing. When this happens, you do need a refreshing, a boost. You do need a reminder of the sustaining power of God and what He is able to do, in spite of yourself, in spite of what you think is or is not happening, in spite of the situation. We're talking about trusting God while you are resting during turbulent times. You need to trust in God in spite of your five senses. We need a reminder that he who promised is indeed well able to deliver us from every circumstance, to heal us from every illness, to stabilize us, to protect us from every danger, to even save us from ourselves. Yes, sometimes we need to be saved from ourselves. Mm, 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 that's something to think about. Jude, first chapter and 23rd verse says, uh, I believe that's the 24th verse, says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless be before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I'm talking about God and his faithfulness. You see, he not only keeps us from falling, he returns to the Father and justifies us with his blood. He presents us faultless before the presence of his glory. Get, get this, with exceeding joy. Yes, I'm talking about trusting God while you're resting during turbulent times. While you are running this race, and yes, life is a race, Satan continues to accuse you before God. That's why we need to encourage each other. Hang in there, brother. Hang on in there, sister. You can do it. You can make it. That's what you should say to your brother or sister who may be going through something. You can encourage them. We need to encourage each other. Sure, the money might not be coming in like you want it to, but trust God. Hang on in there. Sure, that family situation might be tougher than you'd imagine, but trust God. In spite of your senses, hang on in there. Sure, that medical report might not have been what you expected, but what God, whose God are you going to believe? Trust God in spite of that medical report. What doctor, 
He is the doctor of all doctors. We know he is. So hang on in there because it's going to be okay. Sure, it may be taking your body a little bit longer to line up with the word of God. But you speak to that muscle. You speak to that joint. You speak to that bone. You speak to that vessel in the name of Jesus. And you tell it that according to God's word, by his stripes, you are already healed. Hang on in there. You can make it. Sure, that relationship that you thought was going to materialize or last forever isn't what you wanted it to be. And so you may be wondering right at this very moment, what was the use of spending so much time with someone who now is a thing of the past? But I tell you, I'm here to encourage you, trust God, trust him, in spite of what you may be going through. Hang on in there. You can make this. During this race, you may be confronted with situations that would temporarily discourage you. Every test you go through, when it becomes a testimony, you can go out and share that good news with someone else. You need to go through some tests, and those tests you overcome, and then they become testimonies. Sure, some people might try to ridicule you to get you to quit this race. Satan is doing his job. He uses people to discourage you sometimes. He uses sometimes those who are closest to you, and they might not even realize they're being used. But you, my friend, have to depend on on the word of God. So you be in a position where you can recall those scriptures, the word of God to encourage yourself. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Use the word. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Speak it out. If God be for me, he is more than the world against me. Praise God. You hang on in there. Don't you give up. You can make it. You can make it. Sometimes you just need encouragement. Maybe God will have someone else to encourage you, or maybe he just wants you to encourage yourself. So call upon those scriptures and encourage yourself. Sometimes, 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 you just need to reevaluate yourself. Ask yourself some questions. Questions like, am I going the distance? Am I allowing my faith in God to sustain me? Is this enough? Am I confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ? Ask yourself this question. Is the life I'm living a great example of what a Christian's life should be? My brother and sister, you be encouraged. You be encouraged. But remember, this is a faith walk. Hebrews 11, chapter 6, verse says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My prayer for you is that you continue on this faith journey, knowing, trusting, and believing that he who promised is well able to keep his word. Ask yourself this question. Am I trusting in the Lord with all my heart? Am I leaning not to my own understanding? Am I acknowledging him in all my ways? And am I allowing him to direct my path? When situations come up, is the word of God hidden in your heart so that you do not sin against him? Self-evaluation. Self-evaluation. I'm talking about trusting God while you're resting during turbulent times. When the race appears to get rough, rough, when you seem like you can't focus, just call on scriptures like I shared earlier that will remind you that it's already all right. Scriptures that will remind you that the battle is not yours, but that it's the Lord. And guess what? He's already won the battle. Scriptures that will remind you that your help is already there, waiting and watching for you. Psalms 121 verses 1 through for the first verse says, I will lift up my eyes unto the Lord, from hence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The scripture goes on to say, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. How many know we are serving a God? We're talking about God that neither slumbers nor sleeps. He always got his eyes on you. He takes care of the sparrow. He who loves the sparrow and takes care of it, is, doesn't he love you that much more? The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord is the great preserver. Amen. He is the great preserver. Talking about trusting God while you are resting during turbulent times. Brothers and sisters, Especially when you're going through, you need to stop and carry someone else. 
stop and encourage someone else. For the scripture says, when you are strengthened, you need to strengthen your brother. You see, in a world such as the one we're living in right now, if you don't put your trust in Jesus, who is going to protect you? If you don't put your trust in Jesus, what's going to sustain you? You see, you can go the distance when you're fully persuaded that he would not suffer your foot to be moved. You can go the distance when you're fully persuaded that the Lord is indeed your keeper. You can go the distance when you're fully persuaded that God is God, and without him there is no other. Especially during turbulent times, are you prepared to go the distance no matter what? Because you know that you know that you know that God is your refuge, that he is a very help, present help in a time of trouble. If you were fully persuaded that your hope was in Jesus, you would not go around with your head hanging down as one without any hope. If you were fully persuaded of who he is, you wouldn't worry about tomorrow because you wouldn't worry about what's going to happen in the political arena or anything else. You would trust God during these turbulent times. For you would know that there's no need to worry about anything. For the word of God tells us not to worry about tomorrow. For God will take care of tomorrow. Just like God took care of yesterday. Just like he's taking care of today. He's got tomorrow already wrapped up. Just trust God. In spite of your senses, don't give up and don't give in. You see, you can go the distance. You can go the distance, amen. You can go the distance because God, through his precious Holy Spirit, is a comforter and a guide. Don't give up, my sister. Don't give up. Yes, when the race seems weary, when the race seems hard, when the struggle seems to be bearing down on you, all you've got to do is listen to the guidance of his sweet spirit. Yes, you can trust God in troubling waters. You see, he won't steer you wrong. He'll keep you on the right path. Even in the midst of stormy weather, God is still with you. So trust God in spite of your senses. Yes, we're talking about trusting God while you're resting during turbulent times. You see, all of us are going to experience some type of storm in our life at one point or another. Some of us may be tempted to go and hide from the storm while others will wish it would go away or maybe they just live in fear. We know that God has given us many, many weapons to ride it out. We have everything we need God has already given to us. We have the power to choose what we would do in the midst of it. You can ride out the storm during turbulent times when you rest and trust God totally without reservation. Yes, the storms of life will rage in your life, and sometimes you might seem like you don't know your left from your right, your head from your toe. Sometimes you may feel like you don't even know which day it is, but guess what? As Christians, you got everything you need to ride it out the storm, because Christ came to set you free. Are you walking in your freedom tonight? Christ came that you may live and live more abundantly. Are you walking in a life that is abundant right now? It is my hope that whether you are going through a storm this very moment or whether you know of someone who may be going through a storm very moment, it is my hope that this message will inspire you somehow. It is my hope that all my messages will encourage you somehow. It is my hope that this message will prepare you to ride it out knowing that you are already ready victorious through Christ. Isn't that what his abounding grace is all about? His abounding grace. It is my hope that you would trust God in spite of your senses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, three. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth and to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And Jesus tells us, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He tells us he's with us. He tells us he'll always be with us. Trust God. Trust God. Rest during turbulent times. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Psalms 138 and 7. And get this, Jesus speaking again in John 16:33, he says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. You see, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. That's what Jesus says. 
Yes, he tells us, in the world you're going to have tribulation. But be a good cheer. Be happy because I've already overcome the world. How are you going to be happy? Resting in the Lord. How are you going to rest in him? Trusting in his word. How are you going to trust in his word if you don't know his word? You're going to have to study his word to show yourself approved. Trust in a God who is more than enough. Trust in the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Trust in the God who tells you that his grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Trust in the Lord who instructs you and teaches you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Psalms 32 and 8. Trust in the Lord who made the eyes. Can he not see? Trust in the Lord who made your ears. Can he not hear? God knows all, sees all, and cares about about all. The Word of God lets us know in James that if you don't have wisdom, ask him. Ask God. God will not leave you destitute. God will give you the wisdom if you ask him for it. It says in, uh, first James, in James that he'll give it to all men liberally. That means freely. Thank God for wisdom. When the storms of life are surrounding you, are you so caught up in the storm? Are you so caught up in the storm? Or do you just embrace the peace that he's already given you and say, Lord, even in this storm, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I want you to think about that for a minute. Think about that as I pause for just a minute. God never sleeps. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. All you need to do is ask him to give you the strength to embrace all that he's already given you. How many know that sometimes, just sometimes, God wants you to go through a storm so that you can come out victorious and have a testimony for somebody else? If you will only trust him and believe his word, you will have no problem ignoring your five senses. Trust him with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. So yes, as we conclude this part two of resting during turbulent times, we just hope you will hold on to these words of encouragement and periodically go back and study some of these scriptures to strengthen your faith walk. Resting during turbulent times. You can't do this without Jesus. There is no way you can do this without Jesus. So as I come to a conclusion, I can't, uh, I, I'll have to pause because all that I've said so far would be nothing if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. We need to give you an opportunity as we like to do each time for you to accept Jesus as your Savior. You want to know how to rest during turbulent times? You want to know how to trust Him during turbulent times? You want to know God? Well, first you've got to get to know His Son, Jesus, as your Savior. You need to do this first. By taking, taking this very first act of faith, accepting Him into your heart and to your life, you will begin a brand new life. You see, you can be made whole by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior right this very moment. So let me ask you this. If you're not saved, if you have not repented of your sins and accepted Jesus into your heart, in other words, if you are not 100% sure, if you breathe your last breath right now, you would die and spend eternity in heaven. If you're not 100% sure, listen very carefully. Nobody else can save you. Trust Jesus today. There is only one way to God, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, chapter 12, verse says, there, Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So I ask you this question, are you saved? You see, this is what it's all about. This is what this ministry is all about. Winning souls for Christ. Are you saved? Are you born again? Have you made the confession that Jesus Christ is the Lord? Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So this is what you need to do. You need to admit that you are a sinner according to Romans 3, 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The second thing you need to do is be willing to turn from your sin, that is to repent. 
The third thing you need to do is believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose from the dead. For Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the fourth thing, through prayer, invite Jesus into your life to become your personal Savior. For Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you're not saved, if you're not accepting him as your Savior, you can pray this prayer with me right now. You can repeat after me, not just out of your mouth, but from your heart, a heart confession. Because God knows your heart. He knows if you're sincere. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, or even if you have, repeat these after me for perhaps you're in, you're in the company of someone who has not. And that may make them feel comfortable so you can repeat along with them. Right now, this is what we pray. Dear God, I am a sinner, and I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I am willing to turn from my sin. I now invite Christ to come into my heart and life as my personal Savior. Amen. You see, it's so simple if you did that from your heart. You are truly now my brother. You are truly now my sister. If you did that from your heart. If you just trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, you have just begun a wonderful new life in Him. Now, you need to read your Bible every day to get to know Jesus better. Talk to God in prayer every day. Get baptized, worship, fellowship, and serve with other Christians in a local church where Jesus Christ is preached and where the Bible is the final authority. And then, don't be selfish with this thing. Tell others the good news about Jesus Christ. Tell others the good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and get this, if you've just accepted Jesus as your Savior, please let me know. Please email me and let me know. We here at When Christians Speak Talk Radio would love to hear about your new life in Christ. My email address is hisaboundinggraceforever at gmail.com. That's hisaboundinggrace, the number four, ever, E-V-E-R, at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Please keep us in your prayer and just trust God because we know that greater things are in store for you and the best is still yet to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for that soul that just came crying out to you, for that new soul, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for that right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that as he or she walk on this new walk, this new journey, Lord God, that People will rise up and be a blessing to them, Lord God, and we help them on this journey, Father. And dear God, those who have been listening to this word, Lord God, that they would not let this word just fall on stony ground, that they would take this word, hide it in their heart, and go out and serve you, Father. We thank you, Father, for this ministry. We thank you, Lord God, for when Christians speak, talk radio. We thank you for our founder, Reverend Ray Rose, Lord God. And we thank you for all things, Lord, because you are so good. You are so faithful and you are so kind. And God, you are forever loving towards us and we just love you and we praise you right now and we give you all the honor glory and praise because it already belongs to you in jesus name we thank you amen all right well to the next time continue on trust him and know that god is god and he's still on the throne and because of god you can rest during turbulent times amen amen and amen we'll talk to you the next time. God bless you. Amen. What an awesome message, Minister Vanessa. Amen. Resting during turbulent times. Amen. This is part two. You will be able to listen to this, the broadcast in its entirety, uh, probably in about 20 minutes. I actually do share through social media or, uh, you know, record it and download it and um, save it for somebody that needs to hear. Amen. So we pray that you have a blessed um, rest of the um, evening, rest of the night. Amen. This has been when Christmas Speak Talk Radio. The broadcast today has been His Abound of Grace with Minister Vanessa Wims. Resting during turbulent times. This has been part two. Please go back and listen to part one. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>